protecting their male child. All right. This is why it's important not only to look at these things physically, but look at them spiritually. Because when you see the saint, remember, a witness is supposed to do what? Be on the lookout for something. When you see certain things happening, you can know it is time for God to begin to step in. When you see oppression, injustice, bondage, and the people begin to cry out because of the bitterness of their bondage and call out to God. He is going to act. Now understand, the same God that is acting here is the same God that was on the throne when they were throwing those babies in. Oh, that's hard for people to understand. The same God that is on the throne today is the same God that was there when six million Jews were slaughtered. People think that God is supposed to step in. Let me tell you something. Okay. The earth is whose? It's the Lord's. But who did he give the least to? To take care of? Us. We make the rules. Okay. Here as long as we follow his. Ultimately. So judgment delayed. Is not judgment. Or judgment deferred. Is not judgment forgotten about. Okay, it really isn't. All right, so we need to understand America is a fairly new nation, a fairly new nation. So a lot of things, okay, that we see, we have yet to go through. However, one thing to understand, when the end times come, it doesn't matter whether you're new or old, the earth is Yahweh's. <laughs> okay, <laughs> America as a nation may have only been here for 200 and some odd years, but the earth has been here and the earth is Yahweh's and the fullness thereof. Okay, which is another reason why it's uh, important that we follow the Bible biblically, culturally, as well as historically also. That the nations in the Bible were originally defined by God. The nations today... And borders today are defined by man. All right. Man makes the laws. They think that's how it runs. <laughs> okay, it's not that way. All right. We're in the midst of a plague right now that I know everybody's praying about. And I got to tell some people, y'all need to stop praying. Because the last time you had that big prayer, he lose something seven times, 70 times worse. <laughs> you know, something isn't right. But when you're in Torah, what do you know? Leviticus 26. If for all of that, you still don't humble yourself and repent, I will send it seven times worse. And if for all that, you will not humble yourself and repent, I will send it seven times worse. So I'm sitting back and looking, oh man, here goes the UK, 70 times more transmittable. Oh God, here comes the one from South Africa that has already learned how to avoid the vaccine we're getting. Guys, when are we going to learn? We were saying years ago, America, what is it going to take? World, what is it going to take? And this plague is on a worldwide basis. And nothing anyone is doing is making a difference. Why? Because COVID doesn't care. Okay. Not only that, but remember what we learned. When the death angel is loosed, it takes both the righteous and the wicked. In fact, it starts with the righteous because what? Judgment begins where? So the righteous and the wicked may be taken together. However, there is a time of separation. And let me say something. I'm looking at the example here and saying we are pretty much, there is a separation that will go on with this. People will be amazed at some of the things that are going to go on 
in healing and all of that as we really begin to understand this Torah and that we've been set free. How are you going to treat, tell others they're free if you don't believe it for yourself? If you don't understand, when they ask you why the Passover, do you know these are three verses you ought to write in the, in the front of your Bible. Why do we do Passover? So that when people ask you why, you could show them this is what Yahweh did to set my house free, what he did to set me free, and what he did to release me out of the a uh, hand of bondage, and Yeshua is the Lamb of God. He is not the Easter Bunny. Come on. Let's be for real, okay, with that. So we see, as we are reading, okay, once again, okay, verse 15, when Pharaoh stubbornly re refused to let us go, Yahweh slew every firstborn in the land of Egypt, the firstborn of both man and beast. Remember, Pharaoh, okay, considered himself a god. His firstborn would have taken his place. The firstborn are typically the priest. The firstborn of animals are typically what? The sacrifice. So by removing the firstborn of Egypt, Okay, he removed Pharaoh's firstborn, not God here. He removed the Egyptians' firstborn, no priest there. He removed the firstborn animals, not sacrifice. You understand what level, what three levels that was on. Therefore, I sacrifice to Yahweh every first male issue of the womb, but redeem every firstborn among my sons. So our sons were meant to be offered up in place of those firstborn. And, oh, verse 16. And so it shall be a sign upon your hand and as a symbol on your forehead that with a mighty hand Yahweh freed us from Egypt. So once again, the sign on the forehead and the hand is what? Pesach. The redemption of the firstborn. Pesach. The reminder that we are freed from the blood of the lamb. And that Yeshua is now who? Our lamb of God. That we are worshiping him as opposed to in Revelation 13. They are worshiping who? The beast. It's all about worship title. It's all about worship. Worship, worship, worship. All right, let's go backwards. Okay, to... Okay, for chapter number 10. All right, um, let me see right now here. I have a note. All right, chapter number 10. When we left chapter 9, Yahweh, okay, informed them, I'm doing this so that you will know that the earth is mine. Not yours, Pharaoh. The earth is mine. All right. If you, I was going to say, had a, a um, the blue letter Bible up, you could do a word study, okay, on that. On that particular verse. Hold on here. Where's my chapter? Oh, well, I w went actually further than that. Okay. Go to Exodus 8, verse 10. Exodus 8, verse 10. And he said, Tomorrow. Be it unto thy word, according to thy word, that thou mayest know that there is none like unto Yahweh our Elohim. So this is all about showing Egypt who God is. Let me ask you a question. Who is he to you? Who is he to us? 
So could these plagues and things that are going on now be representative of him showing us? He not only had to show the Egyptians, who else did he have to show? The Israelites. For over 200 years, they were used to hearing about Yahweh, but they were seeing Pharaoh and his power. So part of what's going on is for him to show us who he is also. Okay. And so we also know All right, that when we went to, oh, here we go. When we went to chapter 9, verse 14. For I will at this time send all my plagues upon thy heart and upon thy servants and upon thy people so that you may know that there is none like me in all the earth. I not only control nature, but I can control what goes on in your body. Why? Because I'm the one who made man. Okay, and with this, we're seeing what? A separation between who? The Egyptians and his people. All right, if we go to 929, and Moses said unto him, As soon as I am gone out of the city, I will spread abroad my hands unto Yahweh, and the thunder shall cease, neither shall there be any more hail, that you may know how that the earth is is Yahweh's. All right? So it's all about who Yahweh is. And especially the fact, I love in verse 14, that there is none like me in all the earth. That's how he has to be with us. Everything else has to pale in comparison. See, we gave people religion. We didn't give them God. Yahweh is showing the people and the nations who he is. Now, why Egypt? Another reason why Egypt? Because Egypt was who? The most powerful nation in the world at that time. Egypt's influence extended over to Canaan and well beyond. Remember, it was Egypt that the nations came to for food. So Egypt was a very powerful world power, the most powerful world power. And if God, listen, listen through a simple plague, could bring down the economy of the most powerful nation in the world, and show to the world the weaknesses of that government. It's just the little virus. Something we can't even see. Some trust in chariots. Some trust in atomic bombs. But it is a tiny little virus that has brought down this country and the world. Now, let me say something. Don't you think some are saying, if this could happen to the United States? But then again, what this virus is also exposing is the fact that, oh, y'all ain't everything we thought you were. You understand what I'm saying? Which does what? begins to puff up our enemies so that they will come against us in ways they never would have before because they feared us coming back, which is why we get hacked, which is why, you know, oh, you say I can't produce any, any nuclear bombs? Watch this. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? So as he is bringing down one nation, he's beginning to raise up the enemies of that nation also. All right. So that eventually we see when we get into the prophets how Babylon comes in and destroys, okay, Egypt. Assyria comes in. All the nations that Egypt used to be over 
wound up coming in and owning her at one point in time. They still had a Pharaoh, but he was powerless. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. And all it had to do, all Pharaoh had to do, was let the people go. To do the right thing according to God's instruction. But he wouldn't do it. Okay, he wouldn't do it. Okay, so now, go to uh, chapter 10. Bo, where we start this week's Torah portion. Then Yahweh said to Moses, go to Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the hearts of his courtiers in order that I may display these my signs among them. All right, so one reason. Why are they not capitulating fully? God takes what was in their heart to begin with. Remember, everything that's going on is an answer to the, the question that Pharaoh asked. Who is Yahweh? Okay, huh? who is Yahweh? I don't know no Yahweh. I ain't letting these folks go. All right, so he took that question and he's answering it. All right, and each time he lets up, what happens to Pharaoh? He hardens his heart again. All right, he never fully capitulates. Partial obedience. Obedience is still full disobedience. Oh, I know God is more powerful. I know I'm wrong. But by the way, who'd you say was going again? No, they ain't going. Okay. He goes, and the purpose is where purpose is unknown, abuse is inevitable. Why all of this? That I may display these my signs among them, and that you may recount in the hearing of your sons and of your sons' sons, how I made a mockery of the Egyptians and how I displayed my signs among them in order that you may know that I am Yahweh. Not how they may know, but how you may know. How you may know I control the winds and the waves, obey his will. Okay? So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said to him, Thus says Yahweh, the Elohim of the Hebrews, How long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go that they may worship me. For if you refuse to let my people go, tomorrow I will bring locusts on your territory. They shall cover the surface of the land so that no one will be able to see the land. They shall devour the surviving remnant that was left to you after the hail. They shall eat away all your trees that grow in the field. Another note you may need to think about. Revelation. When he looses one of the seals or trumpets. Go through destroy but touch not the green grass or the trees. You understand what I'm saying? So what we're looking at Revelation we see over here, or what we see over here, we can get an understanding of what's going on in Revelation. Because remember, over here in Egypt, the land of Goshen was separated from this. Okay? But those Egyptians had to experience this. The church kind of taught the same thing. Only they called it the rapture. We would be separated from what was going on on the earth, taken up away. But that is not God's pattern. He didn't do that with Noah. He, did, he pulled Lot out, but Lot was still there. Same thing with the Israelites here. Okay? He refers to them as the Hebrews, okay, here. Don't forget, because Hebrew is like an umbrella that can be a whole lot of people as opposed to Israelites, okay, eventually become the natural seed and those who, okay, do the Passover come into the worship of the God of Israel, okay. Moreover, they shall fill your palaces, the houses of all your courtiers, and all of the Egyptians, something that neither you nor your fathers have seen from the day they appeared on earth to this day. With that, he turned and left Pharaoh's presence. Where do we see a great army of locusts loosed again? The book of Joel. 
He calls it his army. The locusts are his army. In other words, there will be a people that are so numerous, they are like locusts. Always remember, locusts are a devourer. When he says he will loose the devourer, now we see, remember, oh man, I don't have my notebook. Okay, the stages of devastation. We've talked about this before, the stages of devastation. That's what we are seeing here. When the hail came, remember, it was at a certain time of the year where the crops were in a certain stage of growth. The hail breaks down pretty much, okay, the barley and everything, but the wheat was still kind of young at that point in time. So it's like you've lost part of your crop, but mercy says, I'm leaving you some. Always remember, everything we are seeing here is from the principle measure for measure. If you will remember that when you see God's okay judgments, to the measure that you did is the measure that will be done to you. Okay, so remember, Yahweh is always known by his judgments, the judgments, all right? He's always known by the judgments he does. His judgments are always fair. His judgments are always a reflection of what we have done. So the measure to what you have done is the measure to what will be done to you. You killed the firstborn, guess what? You're firstborn. You denied them certain things you will be denied certain things. My people cried out in a loud voice to me. Your people are going to cry out in a loud voice to you. And don't we see that with the death of the firstborn? All is Egypt was crying out to him. How do you think the Israelites were crying out as they were having their babies destroyed? Let me tell you something. People think God is playing. People don't really believe this word. But we can see to the measure of what you have done will be the measure to what happens to you. The measure you have done to my people will be the measure that Yah will release upon their oppressors. All right. Verse 7. Pharaoh's courtier said to him, we've heard this recently, how long shall this one be a snare to us? <laughs> Let the men go to worship Yahweh their Elohim. Are you not yet aware that Egypt is lost? Haven't we heard that? Man, you're lost. Give it up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Moses and Aaron were brought back to Pharaoh. He said to them, go worship Yahweh your Elohim. Who are the ones to go? So guess what? This is so funny. Okay. I'll let you go worship. Who's going to go? Oh, you're still trying to give conditions. Okay, I heard your speech that sounded good to the ear, but there was always a little something you really didn't mean behind it. Okay, and Moses say I can play that game too. Go, uh, let me see. Moses replied, we will all go, young and old. We will go with our sons and our daughters, our flocks and herds, for we must observe Yahweh's festival. But he, that Pharaoh, said to him, Yahweh be with you. The same as I mean to let your children go with you, clearly you are bent on mischief. No, you men folk go and worship Yahweh, since that is what you want. And they were expelled from Pharaoh's presence. Because basically, it was the men who did the worship. You're not going to take your children. Because I know if you take your children, you have no intention of coming back. There's nothing here for you to come back. If you take your children and your herds, there's nothing for you to come back for. So isn't that just like Pharaoh? Okay? Tell you to leave your children behind. We have Pharaohs in the churches. You walk in the door, your kids go one way and you go another. You don't know what your kids are being taught. Whereas if you're all together, everyone's hearing the same thing. You understand what I'm saying? And then if the kids don't quite understand, it's up to the parents to explain it to them. Okay? So you separate the kids 
at the door. Your kids learn one thing one way, you learn something another way, and sometimes you may be at odds with what the kids may have heard. You understand what I'm saying? Not good. Not good at all. All right? We know what, uh, Yahweh, what Yahweh does. He says to Moses, hold your arm out over the land of Egypt for the locusts. All right? Because partial capitulation is full rebellion. Remember this. Partial obedience is full disobedience. Doing part of what Yahweh says doesn't fool anybody but the person who's doing it. Okay? It's full disobedience. All right? We know that, uh, uh, that they may come upon the land of Egypt, eat up all the grasses of the land, whatever the hail has left. So Moses held out his rod over the land of Egypt. Yahweh drove an east wind over the land that day and night. When the morning came, so the locusts came. Okay? Go down to verse 15. They hid all the land from view, and the land was darkened, and they ate up all the grasses of the field, all the fruit of the trees, which the hail had left, so that nothing green was left of tree or grass of the field in all the land of Egypt. They not only lost their barley, they lost their wheat, they lost their trees, the fruit of the trees which come in the fall. Think about it. So you've lost an entire year of produce. Not only produce for you, but when you have a farm, you have some that you harvest to sell. You have some that you have for your household. You have seed that you plant for a future generation, all coming out of the same harvest. Am I right? He destroyed an entire year, which meant that if you didn't have anything stored up, come on, this is a pattern, okay, of when you see the plagues coming upon the land. What do you have in your savings? Because one thing could come up and wipe out an entire year's worth of income. You lose your job. Think about it. Remember, the hail destroyed, okay, all stages of the barley because that was the most grown. The wheat wasn't quite tall enough, but the locusts represented complete devastation. Complete devastation of all crops for an entire year. How long have we been in this mess? The plague started, I'll say, a year ago, but we didn't start seeing the economic downturns really until March. And in that time, oh God, I don't think you're seeing this. We saw businesses close for a little while, people laid off. Okay? That's the hell. Then we start seeing businesses close all together so that now you have no job to go back to. So if you didn't have a savings account or anything, what are you doing? If the government wasn't kind enough to stop foreclosures, where were you living? Now, total dependence is upon who? Government for aid. Don't blame the, the government's taking away our controls. No, you had control and you didn't do the right thing when you had control. You didn't save, okay? You didn't store up. You didn't do what was supposed to be done. So now you're in a position where if the government doesn't give it to you, you're just like they were in the days of Joseph. You have saved our lives. Now give us seed and we'll plant. Isn't that the same thing we're waiting for? Another stimulus? Whereas if you've done what you're supposed to do, the stimulus you use, okay, once again, for increase, not to pay regular bills. You put it aside. If you don't know what to do with it, put it in a bank account. That'll earn 0 .0001 interest, but at least it'll be doing something. Okay? You understand what I'm saying? All right? All of these are patterns that we need to be watching out for, all right? So if the government doesn't come through with the stimulus and stopping the foreclosures, what are we going to have? We already have people in food lines. Is that just what they came to Egypt for? Aren't you seeing this? Aren't people, we're witnessing this, and people aren't, the church isn't paying attention. Why? Because the church has other agendas, 
Oh, yeah, Torah's been done away with. Okay, all right. Verse 16, okay. Pharaoh hurriedly summons Moses, and Aaron says, I stand guilty before Yahweh, your Elohim, and before you. Here we go again. Forgive my offense just this once. Just this once. And plead with Yahweh, your Elohim, that he but remove this death from me. Oh my God, it's all about you, Pharaoh. Not about what's going on with the people. It's always about you, Pharaoh. So he left Pharaoh's presence and pleaded with Yahweh. Yahweh caused a shift to a very strong west wind, which lifted the locusts and hurled them into the sea of reeds. That's the same sea they're going to go over. Oh, I bet the fish were happy. Not a single locust remained in all the territory of Egypt. But Yahweh stiffened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not let the Israelites go. Then Yahweh said to Moses, hold out your arm towards the sky that there may be darkness upon the land of Egypt. A darkness that can be touched. Guess what? He told Pharaoh about the locusts, but didn't say anything to him about the darkness. Okay, this darkness is not just a physical but spiritual darkness. You said you saw Yahweh's light. What did he say? Forgive my offense. Okay, I'm wrong. But now since you want to be in spiritual darkness through your disobedience, what does he do? I'll give you physical darkness so that it is on earth as it is in heaven. Physical darkness, spiritual darkness. Let me say something to you. There is a big spirit that is across this land that people are beginning to deal with a lot. It's called depression. And what is depression? A person who is depressed feels they are in what? Darkness. It is a darkness so pervasive that it is physical. It has physical manifestations in the body. Okay. Are you depressed? Mm -hmm. Depression hurts. Am I right? All right. And we are seeing that. We're hearing about depression more and more. As the plagues continue, people in quarantine are in what? Darkness. Depression. All right. Moses held up his arm towards the sky. We know what happened. Verse 23, people could not see one another, and for three days, no one could get up from where they were. Sounds familiar. Sounds like quarantine to me. But all the Israelites enjoyed light in their dwelling. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But once again, what did he do with creation? We talked about this last week. He separated what? Light from darkness. He's showing he's the God of creation. He is our creator that became our savior. All right, I want to skip over. I'm not going to keep you much longer. Skip over to um, chapter 11. Yahweh said to Moses, I will bring but one more plague upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. After that, he shall let you go from here. Indeed, when he lets you go, he will drive you out of here, one and all. Tell the people to borrow each man from his neighbor and each woman from hers objects of silver and gold. Yahweh dispossessed the Egyptians favorably towards the people. Moreover, Moses himself was much esteemed in the land of Egypt among Pharaoh's courtiers and among the people. Why wouldn't he be? Finally, the government is releasing uh, <laughs> their, uh, okay, okay. They're releasing their silver and gold to the people. Okay, so how do you need to pray? The same way here. Lord, okay, grant, dispossess those government people. Give us favor with them that they will release their silver and gold. Silver and gold is not just, okay, not just what the stimulus is. Let me tell you something. They have pages and pages of grants for coronavirus. You need to look up coronavirus grants. Trust me when I say you can find something you can apply for, okay, and use for your benefit because we are in, listen, 
We are in a time where pe we, as people of God, are being given favor. We're being given favor. Okay? Then uh, verse number four of this. Moses said, Thus says Yahweh, towards midnight I will go forth among the Egyptians, and every firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sits on his throne to the firstborn of the slave girl who is behind the millstones and all the firstborn of cattle. And there shall be a loud cry in all the land of Egypt, such as has never been or will be ever again. The same way you made my people cry is the same way you will cry. But not a dog shall snarl. You hear that itchy? At any of the Israelites, at man or beast, in order, in order that you may know that Yahweh makes a distinction between Egypt and Israel. So I say to you again, I say to you again, okay, the church is waiting for a rapture, right? But what event does he show that he will separate his people from all the wrath that is going on in a nation? Passover! Passover! Which is the sign and the mark of God. Come on. In the book of Revelation, there is a difference between those. He treats those that take the mark of the beast differently than those that keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Yeshua HaMashiach. We keep the commandments of God. We do our Pesach Seder. We have the testimony of Yeshua HaMashiach. We're saved by the blood of the Lamb. Come on. And he makes a distinction between those two groups. Hallelujah. Okay. He goes on and tells them that all these courtiers of yours shall come down to, to me and bow low to me saying, Depart you and all your people who follow you. After that I will depart. And he left Pharaoh's presence in hot anger. In other words, Moses was ticked off. Okay. Then what does God do? Pharaoh will not heed you in order that my marvels may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. One another reason why. He's showing who? That he is the creator of the heavens and earth. So therefore he has command upon life and death. He can determine who lives and who dies. Chapter 12 is where we get. Yahweh says to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt. This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the months of the year for you. So, we have a change in the calendar. That change in the calendar is now based upon our freedom. So, month one of your freedom, the month you went free. Month two, the second month after you were made three. Month ten, the tenth month of your freedom. So, what does everything and everything we now do point towards? Freedom to remind us we are free. Why do you think Pharaoh changes the calendar so he puts you on his schedule to remind you you're still under Pharaoh, which is why we pay attention to our timing, you understand, and our months to remind us that we are free. But we do render unto Pharaoh the things that are Pharaoh or Caesar and render unto God. The things that are God's. Okay. I'm going to kind of end with that. I may resume this again on Thursday. Okay. To go over that. Because there are some very important principles. In this particular uh, Torah portion. That we need to uh, go over. The timing. Okay. And also why he is doing everything he is doing here. Chapter 12 is very important. Okay. Because... It is where we see him in a completely different light. Okay, we begin to understand him as our creator who becomes our savior. The creator who becomes our savior. This is a very important Torah portion for everyone to, you know, understand. You know, so to recap. Okay, the mark or sign on our hand and the sign on our forehead. Those points back to, okay, Pesach, the slaying of the lamb. 
and Yahweh's redemption and Pharaoh's demise. Because let's not forget, we were set free, but Pharaoh was destroyed also. Which gives you kind of an idea, Revelation 19, when Yeshua comes back riding, okay, with his army, his word does what? Destroys the beast and the false prophet and those that follow him. They're cast into where? The lake of fire. The lake. Oh, a lake? Where was Pharaoh destroyed? In water. This time not water, but with fire. You understand? The lake of fire. Fire. Okay. So, a lot of symbolism, okay, in this. One of the things that I see, let me tell you, Pharaoh didn't learn his lesson. Okay. Regardless of what he said, he didn't mean it. He's going to find a way to try to not do the right thing. Guess what? Things, times don't change. You don't listen to what people say in the moment of emotion. When that emotion goes away, they revert right back to their old self. If we see it in the Bible, we're going to see it here also. We saw everybody up in arms over the Capitol. Two weeks later, people try to forget. Oh, let's be nice. Let's unify. No, there is no unity without justice. Sorry. That's a biblical pattern. Okay. God is a God of justice. There must be justice when blood is shed. When blood is shed. All right. Ed, you want to take the microphone and play us out? Um, next week, just to let you know, I'm hoping Leroy will be here. I'm going to kind of be here and not here at the same time. I have a, a class that I'm hoping, unfortunately, they changed the timing of the class. And usually I come out here and teach and then go right back to my class again. But I may have to miss it because they changed the class an hour, made it an hour later. So that it basically falls when we're having service. So I'm going to see if I can write for a special dispensation to be set free for a couple of hours. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, uh -huh. you know, to uh, I'll be able to do class. But if I, I am not, then uh, Ed and uh, Leroy can handle it. And I'll just let everyone online know that if that is the case, uh, it will be the case, I will not be able to follow up with you after the service so that you know ahead of time. Don't, you know, get upset or anything because I'm not there. You know, but this is for... Um, um, we working with our, our doctors and everything. I have to recertify, okay, with that. That's the only way I get to do a lot of the things that we do. So, anyway, but I'm hoping to uh, be here. Anyway, Ed, pray us out. Thank you, Lord. We just thank you for the word. We thank you for the pastor for bringing forth your word. Father, we just thank you, God, that you are God. You are God of freedom. You have set us free, Father God. We thank you that the beginning of time for us begins with the beginning of our freedom from slavery to Pharaoh in Egypt. We thank you, Lord, that your word is true today as it was true yesterday and it will also be true tomorrow. We walk in your will and your way and your path for us, Lord. Lord, guide us, Father God. Lead us, Father, as you have led us before. Teach us, Lord. Grant us favor in this land, Father, that we may prosper and grow here and not be diminished. Lord God, that we may teach our children your will and your way as you taught your children back in the times of Pharaoh, Lord, in Egypt. Lord, let our children know what this day means and what it means to us, Lord. It is the day of freedom, a day of passing over, when the death angel passed over our houses and saved us. Thank you, Lord, that we go forth and power by your word and move by your spirit to do what you will have it to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Give us one one nugget, Ed. Oh Take the microphone. Uh, uh, one the nugget. Three, the three things for me, for us, and for our houses. Those okay, are the three yeah, yes, right. Uh -huh. right. Okay, Lena, give us a nugget. Yeah, the, same one. Yeah, the, same. the same one for everyone? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. That was that was so profound to me last night. Okay. All right. I'll take the microphone and go back with uh, um, our group.